Theo, and a happy spooky season to you. Kent Brindley, the top 10 hmm, monsters or ghosts, specifically from Scooby-Doo, where are you? I did a top 10 list of my favorite Scooby spooks all around last year. I can do better. There were there were 10 that clearly belonged from Scooby-Doo, where are you, on its own. And there were even more spectacular spirits from another iteration of Scooby-Doo that I will cover at some point in October. Some of these, some of these monsters did make it into my top ten favorite Scooby mo Scooby villains monsters of all time between the first four iterations of Scooby-Doo. Others, well, there's only so much room. And I digress that Scooby-Doo, where are you? Presented some great spooks. Let's say that we get after some, some answers to this, huh? What do you say? Yeah, let's do this. Okay. Number 10. I am going with... Number 10. The Ghost of Zen Tuo. And, of course, his... The, and, of course, the zombie followers, his emissaries, from the mystery mask mix-up. The ghost of Zentuo didn't really look like a Scooby-Doo villain. He, was, he had a great villain design. He would have been great in, um, say, Fang Face or Plastic Man. Just not the best villain design for Scooby-Doo. And the backstory where the mask hid the, contained a microfilm of, of his agents helping him to swindle whatever it was he was swindling. They tried. Again, I loved his. I loved the design. It just looked more in character for a villain from Fang Face, from Plastic Man, or maybe from Golden Gold and Action Jack. At number nine, a big bad werewolf from, of course, who's afraid of the big bad werewolf? He was a sheep rustler in a werewolf's disguise. The thing about Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Season 2 was that they was the inclusion of the chase music and the chase tracks. Um, the Big Bad Werewolf probably had one of my two favorite chase songs in it. One of my three favorites, excuse me. Mystery Mask, Mystery Mask Mix-Up had another one. And sometimes the inclusion of the chase music really carried the episode. That was the case with the werewolf. Number eight, the ghost of Hyde. Again from season two. And Hanna-Barbera really wanted to put on screen Mr. H Mr. Hyde. They went so far as to make the phony Mr. Hyde Dr. Jekyll's great-great-grandson. Uh, I think it was two greats, I think. At number seven, uh, Creeps and Crawls the Phantom Shadows from Scooby-Doo Season 1. They were two they were two lawyers, attorneys, 
who wanted a who wanted a big money grab for themselves. Colonel Custard had had passed away, leaving behind a vast fortune to either to one of his cousins or to Scooby Doo, whoever could stay the night in a haunted house, haunted by either two or three phantom shadows, depending what scene we're watching. It was supposed to be two because it was the attorneys. Um, they went the extra mile and really tried to kill Shaggy and Scooby in one scene. If not seriously harm them, then to actually kill them. That is, and that's taken things really far. Number seven. Number six, the Indian witch doctor from Decoy for a dog napper. Again, the Indian witch doctor I am basing sheerly on design. He looks like a great character. The premise was that he was Buckmasters after every single show dog that could possibly beat his his precious pooch in a dog show contest. He abducts Scooby in um, in confusion that it was Bob Miller's Great Dane, the last of the dogs who could possibly beat Masters' dog. And the gang was right there in his office when they made this plan, so he should have known that that was not Bob Miller's Great Dane. Maybe I am basing this sheerly on his character design, on the witch doctor's character design, to put him in at number six. Yeah, six and seven should have been flopped. All right, number five, the Creeper, the Phantom Scarecrow of the Creeper. He um, was... He was Carswell, the bank president, robbing his own bank and making it look like a phantom was doing it. The design score for the Creeper, as with most of my favorite Scooby monsters, is what puts him in at number five. Number four. Now, have we not discussed this yet? You know he's coming, but not yet. Number four. <laughs> uh, Big Bob Oakley, alias the actor, for his roles as Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Gypsy. I swear there was one more. I think it was some kind of phantom, too. Of Franken Castle. Castle in the Castle. At number three, we have the ghost of Elias Kingston. Certainly a frightening figure. A vast majority of the opening credits to Scooby Doo, Where Are You? came from the episode with. The Ghost of Elias Kingston. What the heck is going on? He was a great character design. He had a... And he had a solid plan. I mean... I mean, Uncle Stewart to not only dress himself up as the ghost, but to use an extra disguise to make himself appear older... Because he's after the family fortune. That's some heavy thinking. Number two. 
how have we not addressed this guy yet? Because he's right here. At number two, the spooky space kook. The space kook. Not a solid plan. I mean, buying up an, an abandoned airfield for... I think it was just for a land grab. Maybe it was an oil swindling scheme. Anywho, the space kook is here purely for the design score. I mean, you've got the spaceship following him around to make him look like he's from space. That giggling, that giggling cackle that could scare the pants off of anyone. Um, the let alone the remote controlled jeep and the fact that for a split second it looks like there is an army of space kooks all giggling simultaneously i mean it's one thing to scare shaggy and scooby but this guy could scare anybody let alone the scene where shaggy finally points out that Mr. Bascom is tired of being a space ghost. Space ghost. Oh, yeah. I went there. My mind has gone there every single time, ever since the first time I heard Shaggy utter that sentence. Number one. Number one, the Scooby Spook who started it all. The Black Knight. Mr. Wickles, the art counterfeiter and art swindler. The Legend of the Black Knight that kicked off a franchise that has been going on in some way, shape, or form since 1969. And he kicked off the franchise with style. From then on, it was mystery solving that mixed suspense and humor in some variation on the ratio. This has been my top 10 favorite Scooby Spooks, specifically from Scooby Doo, Where Are You? And obviously some have shifted position from the time that I made the top 10 for any and all four of the original seasons. Any and all four of the original incarnations, excuse me. Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You, the new Scooby movies, Scooby-Doo show, Scooby and Scrappy season one. That's right. I forgot. All right. I'll see you guys soon with another list. Take care.